Hey guys, it's me, Johnny Crimson 2000, here for part two of Super Mario Brothers um, on the Super NES, the Super Mario All Stars version. And here we go. Uh, this is a bonus room. This one's a special bonus room. The reason why it's special is that if you break the blocks in a specific order, or you s break specific blocks, you get to make Mario's face. If you guys can tell, there's the sideburns, the big nose in the middle, the mustache, and the two eyes. And I do kind of like a little dance, just because I'm happy. And I like it. <laughs> um, anyway, here we go. World 3-1 is one of the first, um, I think it is the first, uh, nighttime level. And there you guys see a new enemy, but I'm not going to be introducing them just yet. Because, really, in this level, they're, they're only there that one time, and if you find the star, you're pretty much just going to run right past them. And they shouldn't be a big problem. Not yet. Not yet. Um, but any, anyways, I was mentioning before that I this is the ROM version, and I had to play using the... Xbox 360 controller. What I didn't mention is that I actually had to use not only the Xbox 360 controller, not only on a ROM, so it felt weird playing it on the computer screen, but it was a third party Xbox 360 controller. As if the regular one isn't bad enough. So, I just wanted to mention to you guys that, you know, especially towards the beginning, I mean, in the first level, in the first part, the World 1 1, I missed the pole like by a lot. I actually went jumped backwards on it. I didn't even know you could do that. And that's why, so it took me a while to get used to this. Anyway, World 2 uh 3 2 is extremely flat. Um I guess the gimmick of this, um, from what I can understand, is basically just it's flat and you get a lot of good use out of the Koopa Troopa shells. The only problem is that if you get a Koopa Troopa shell and you kick it forward, yes it will kill most enemies that are and you can run like, if you run behind the Koopa Troopa shell, you can pretty much take out all of them, all the enemies on the screen. But eventually, either you're going to run into a bottomless gap, or the Koopa Troopa shell is going to bounce back at you. So, watch out for that. Again, main attack is Karma, so watch out. Anyway, this introduces the pulley system, the pulley uh, platforms, and I did horribly on it. You have to be careful, because if you... If you stand on one for too long the other one will go too high up for you to jump on it and if I'm not mistaken I haven't done it in a while but I think if you go down too far uh, both of them will fall so you can't stay on there forever it's not like you know it's not like it has a limit on how low it can go and then it just stops if you stand on there for too long and it goes too far too low it will fall off and you will die and uh, just a piece of advice for that last one the last pulley there just jump on the one on the left and let it let the second one go up higher so you'll have enough height to get the maximum points on the on the flagpole. Anyway, here we go with uh, World 3-4, the castle level of this world. And this one can be tricky because not only do you have the Potoboos, the uh, flaming Goombas on fire, but you also have the, the fire rods. And for that little section right there, um, it may just be me, but I always try to jump off the bottom like under the question blocks, question mark blocks. I I don't know. I just have this thing where I feel like if I jump from the top, if I'm on top of the question blocks, then I'll hit the roof or the ceiling, and then I'll bounce down and die. Anyways, there's a big like portrait of Bowser in the back. I love that. I don't know why. I just really love it. He's so cocky. But I mean, he can do so. He's really awesome. But I took him out, or I took out the false Bowser, and got a Buzzy Beetle out of it. And like I said, um, the number of toads that come out of the, that comes out of the bag is dependent on what world you're in. So we're in world 3-4, we just beat Bowser, so we get three toadstools. Anyway, world 4-1 introduces one of the most annoying characters in this game. And we go to it right now with the enemy bio. This is Lakadu. Lakadu is, I have no idea, I think he's a Koopa Troopa, but with like glasses, but I don't know. He rides around in a cloud and throws off these guys. They're spinies. Spinies are basically just Koopa Troopas, sort of, except they have spines. And the big thing with them is that you can't kill them. With Koopa Troopas, you can just jump hot on top of them, 
But if you try to do that with spinies, you'll just get shanked. And, you know, you'll get hurt. So you can't really take them out. The only way you can take them out is, one, is, you know, just try to avoid them. Well, I guess that's not really taking them out. Um, you can hit them with a fireball, you can hit them with a shell. And you can also take out the Lakitu like I just did. The only problem with that is that Lakitu stays on top of the screen. So most of the time you can't reach him unless you get lucky enough to find a place to jump off of. And you can jump on top of him. The only thing with that is that you got to be careful when you do that. Because you have to be careful that when you land on him, he's not on... Like, he's not halfway throwing out another spiny because, you know, you will get hurt. Here we go with another underground level, World 4-2. And this one's tricky because the first... Or the... This, that thing is so narrow, so you gotta be careful with that. Take some precision jumping. Precision, however you say that word. And here we go with the next introduction of a new enemy. This is Buzzy Beetle. Buzzy Beetle is what the last false Bowser turned into. Buzzy Beetles are basically uh, another form of Koopa Troopa. I think they're turtles? I'm not sure. But basically, they have metal shells. And you can't hit them with the fireball, it does nothing to them. And they pretty much just act the same way as Koopa Troopas can. You can stomp on them and they'll retract back into the metal shell. And then you can kick them. But because you can't take them out with, a, uh, with the fireball, they, they're a little bit more annoying. Because they tend to be in places where there's like two walls on, on either side. Um, you'll see it in a minute, right here. See, he's like in between a pipe and a wall and if I jumped on him and I kicked him that thing will just bounce back and forth indefinitely until I get get out of the screen so that can be annoying anyway we triumphed over world 4-2 and we saved another small castle hooray oh and there we go fireworks and World 4-3 introduces mushrooms. Now you're on top of big mushrooms. Hooray. Um, these pretty much are just the same thing as the other levels where you're on top of palm trees or pills or whatever they are. Except they just look like mushrooms. And here we go again with the pulley platforms. Um, and this one especially, not so much as the last one, you have to really plan out how much you stand on it. Because as you see here, you, you don't want to stand on it too long and you don't want to stand it too... Uh, you don't want to jump off too soon because you want it to the second platform you want it to be just right so that you get enough height to jump to this to the next platform after that so it takes a little bit of strategy anyway here we go with world 4 4 castle of this world and this one introduces the concept of the maze not so much as a maze as in you have to go the right order as you just heard it made a little ping sound when you hear that little ping sound that means you went the right way if you didn't you'd hear kind of like a buzzing sound like a loud buzzing sound and basically if you go the wrong way the whole thing repeats itself over and over again until you get it right but as long as you just go the, the way that I did you should be fine it's not that hard it's not as hard as um, it's not as hard as the last level the last level is also a maze level and then that one is especially daunting the only difficult thing about this one is, that, yes, you can get lost if you, like, don't know where you're going, and it doesn't have an item, so there's no way of, you know, becoming Super Mario if you if you come in here as Small Mario. But here we go with World 5-1 introduces the snow, but it's really just, just for show. The snow doesn't affect you in any way. It's not slippery like in other games. Um, I mean, Mario's already kind of slippery enough. I mean, he has momentum, so... Doesn't really affect them all that much. But here we go, we introduced ourselves to another enemy. And it is the Bullet Bill, slash the Bullet Blaster. Bullet Blaster is the cannon that sits on the ground and shoots out these big missiles, or I guess big bullets, called Bullet Bills. Nana died! Yay! How do you die while you have the star power? Only me. Anyway, you have to be careful with the bullet bills because they shoot and it's not like the piranha plants where, you know, if you stand close to them, they won't shoot. They'll still shoot. 
And here I try to show this thing where usually when I jumped into that... Or, you know, I don't know what triggers it, but usually when you jump into that empty space right there where a block, you know, looks like it should be, you get a hidden one-up. I don't know why it didn't work there. Sometimes it does, sometimes it doesn't. I don't know if something triggers it or if I just... I don't know. If somebody can help me out, please comment and tell me how, because I can't figure it out. Anyway, here's World 5-2, and this is where things pick up. This is when things get kind of tricky. There you introduce to a bouncer, kind of like a coil type thing, and that one can be a bit tricky, but I'll explain it in a little bit, because now we're introduced to the enemy that was introduced before, but I didn't talk about him. And here we go. This is the Hammer Brother, and these guys, oh my god, are they annoying. They're basically Koopa Troopas that stand upright, and they throw hammers, and they throw so many, and they jump up, and it's so hard to kill them. I got mad, so I just took him out, so I'm like, screw it. Especially when you're small Mario, because, ugh, it's horrible. And actually, I didn't even know that this place was here, this secret level thing, uh, underwater thing. I didn't even know it was here, so you'll see me, like, die. Yeah, I didn't know, I, when I was playing this, I think it was, like, sucking me under, because you see the... That's one thing I didn't mention about the underwater levels. When there's a hole on the bottom, you get drawn towards that hole, the, the bottomless pit. You get drawn to it. And I guess that's what happened. I, I wasn't pushing any button. It just kind of pulled me down to the side and then you know, just put me to the cheap cheap. Here we go. Again, Hammer Brother, I'm going to take you out. I'm going to make you my punk. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Crap! Yeah, like I said, they can be really annoying, and this time I chose not to go through that pipe because I, I, I was just like, whatever. And uh, as you saw right there, you can take out the Hammer Brother by either jumping on him or by, you know, as with other enemies, I didn't explain it, but you can also take out enemies if you if they're standing on, t uh, on top of a block and you hit the block underneath. Um, with these brick blocks, you can hit them indefinitely as Small Mario, and as long as you hit them, It'll kind of knock him out. Um, with the question marks, obviously you can only hit him once, see like that, before they become kind of inactive. Or so you, you have to be careful with that. Um, but anyways, uh, the thing that I wanted to explain was the the coil that you guys saw before. That one can be a bit tricky because you have to be. I don't know how to explain it, but you kind of have to push the button the right way. Um, at the right time. I don't know if you have to press the jump button and hold it so that you jump high or or you just have to push it at the right time. But I've had so many times where I pushed the jump button and I just didn't jump high and I thought I was gonna... Ooh, there you go. Epic double stomp. Got rid of the, co the, the Goomba and the Bullet Bill at the same time. What? Um, but yeah, anyway, I don't know if it's... Yeah, you just have to play around with that. And this level introduces the... the and I died. Crap! <laughs> See, I told you those things were the devil. You have to plan when, when to jump on that. On those, like, these platforms that go from left to, to right. Because if, if you... If they pop in, like, if they come on screen at the wrong time, then they're, like, all thrown off, and it just... It's horrible. But this level introduced the, uh... The random bullet bills coming off the screen, and they come off the screen all the time. There's no bullet blaster. Um, they just come on in in different times. But anyway, this is the end of part two. Look out for part three.